Hi, welcome to Bark Heart Bookshelf, a video series about books and the drinks they inspire. My name is Elias, and today we're talking about The Two Doctors Gorski by Isaac Fellman. The Two Doctors Gorski is a dark academia fantasy novella, nice little quick read uh, to serve as a capstone to our November long dark academia series seminar. Um, it's one that I was really looking forward to reading and had an absolutely fantastic time with. And it is a book that is available today, November 29th, on shelves in bookstores, available to snag to be a perfect little um, novella read. I love a novella because it's like a, a petty for or a pastry. It's something that you can read in a single setting uh, and in a single sitting where you really get to go deeply into a world and then emerge in sort of short fashion in a way that you don't necessarily with a novel where you're spending days and days um, there in that world. The Two Doctors Gorski is the story of Anne, a magical graduate student in a world where magic is like hard sciences but also um, deliciously ephemeral and still very mysterious. It does still feel um, magical and otherworldly. And it was really a, a brilliant and uh, effervescent work. Uh, one of those ones that feels like you're sort of drifting through uh, or looking at a mosaic um, where you see the direction and then it's only when you step out that you can really see the full picture. So a really nice way to conclude our Dark Academia series and one that I'm, I had been looking forward to reading, one that I enjoyed tremendously and one that I'm tremendously grateful to the publisher, Tor.com, for sending me an early copy so that we could have our little drink uh, here on the uh, very first day that the book is available. As I said, it's the story of Anne, a magical graduate student who is um, a mind reader and has a sort of compulsion um, to read minds, to seek escape from her own self in the minds of others, and uh, she finds herself under the uh, mentorship of a new um, graduate sort of advisor, the um, eponymous Dr. Gorski, who has at some point in his past made a homunculus, has separated portions of his self, his personality, his being, into a uh, another person, uh, Ariel, who is a, a real delight of a character, and um, so hence the the two doctors Gorski, and we see sort of the relationship between self and work, and compartmentalization, and um, what it means to live the life of the mind, what it means to be a wunderkind, what it means to be brilliant and to want brilliance and to want a long-standing career, the messiness of being a later career scholar, and the messiness of being an early career scholar, of the entanglements between mentor and mentee, and the uh, sort of transcendental magic that can come uh, into that relationship. Just a really, a really smart piece of work, and one that I I'm really delighted to to have read and to get to talk about here to conclude our little series. And so, of course, we needed to make a drink. Today's drink is a mocktail. This is the Branford tonic, named for the university that we see here in the novella. And uh, why don't we get started? We're going to start with two ounces of cold brew concentrate. Because when we don't have uh, an alcoholic drink, we like a caffeinated drink. And for dark academia and for academia in general, one, you get that darkness, and two, uh, got a lot of folks who are drinking a lot of caffeine in graduate school, magical or otherwise. Uh, so we're going to get that into an old-fashioned glass with a large ice cube just to start. And then we will get half an ounce of cinnamon syrup. 
and bring a little bit of spice, a hint of sweetness into that. And we're going to get that in there as well. Now we're going to give this a little stir just to get those combined. And lovely. I've got a little can of tonic water because it can't be the Branford tonic without tonic. Now ordinarily, because we're using this sort of effervescent uh, tonic water, we would plan to serve a drink like this in a tall, narrow highball glass that's going to preserve those bubbles. But one of the things that uh, I really saw in the world of the two doctors, Gorsi, and in the narrative of the novella is this idea of brilliance and power and the uh, greatness being understood as ephemeral, that um, you were brilliant when you were young and now as a, a later career scholar you feel sort of um, like your best days are past you. And so having this wider mouth and allowing our tonic to uh, lose some of its carbonation a little bit faster feels appropriate to the um, sense of frustration that characters in the novella have. We're just going to get that all the way up to the top. But you'll notice that we still have one more bottle here on the bar cart to finish things off because right now we have a, a fairly uh, standard sort of coffee tonic which is a nice little um, classic drink traditionally made with espresso but really wonderful with cold brew and easier to make at home with cold brew. But we're going to need uh, a little garnish, a little something to take it to the next level. And for that we're going to use rose water. Um, and a at a point in the novella has a sense of feeling like a rose and feeling like a rose that's starting to dry. Um, and so having just here on the top of our drink the whisper of rose, that hint of fragrance, that again ephemerality, feels really in keeping with the spirit of the novella. And so just as a garnishing note, as uh, that first bit of smell that's going to hit our palate as we start to drink our Branford tonic. We're going to get one, two, three sprays, spritzes of that rose water. And that's just going to sit on the top of the rest of our ingredients, give us some fragrance, and then surprise us as we slip into the more dark chocolate fruit uh, cinnamon flavors of the uh, the rest of the drink. And so there you have it. This is the Branford Tonic, a mocktail inspired by the Two Doctors Gorski by Isaac Fellman. The Two Doctors Gorski is available now. It's a really great, um, thoughtful, and quick read for this time of year. I know uh, a novella is a really great choice when we're all busy here at the end of the year. Uh, I've got a link to snag the book down below. The Boston Shaker, where we get all of our tools and ingredients to various forms of social media, including Twitter and Instagram, where there are written versions of uh, today's recipe. We have concluded our little tour through dark academic fantasy with this final capstone story, and so you can keep your eyes peeled next Tuesday at noon for a, a little something different and a little something brighter. Uh, and a little something more more sensual. So uh, make sure you tune in, try the drink, let me know what you think, and until next time, cheers. <laughs>